they are a 10-win football team. They could be an 11-win football team in the playoffs again. And for all the talk about Rodgers and for all the talk about Mahomes, Trev, you are saying there is not enough talk about Tom Brady. Brady deserves to be in this conversation. Not necessarily to win it, but to be in the conversation as somebody who's qualified and having an MVP style season. And it's not because of stats. I mean, he's thrown for over 4,200 yards, right? Which puts him at fourth in the league, and there's only one playoff quarterback who will be ahead of that, and that's Mahomes. Uh, He's had his down moments as well. Yeah, He's played pretty bad at times. But what you said about Tampa being in the playoffs, Zubin, to me is the big thing. Because it's not just keeping going a dynasty or, or continuing greatness, which is what Aaron Rodgers is doing with the Packers and what Patrick Mahomes is doing with the Chiefs. Sometimes it's about elevating a team way beyond what they've been, mm. not just in recent memory, but forever. You know, 2007 was the last time Tampa made the playoffs. And here comes Brady in the first year that he's there. He elevates them to the playoffs. They didn't win their division, but they had a long a lot farther to go to get from where they were to where they are now than the Packers did or the Chiefs did. And that's one of the reasons I think that Brady deserves to be in the conversation for MVP. No doubt. I'd add two things to that. One, if you talk about a team like New Orleans, the team that's ahead of them in the division, right, they've had the triplet scenario of Breeze and Kamara and Michael Thomas there for a while. So even though there was truncated training camp, even though there was no OTAs and offseason work, those guys have been together for a long time. Brady had Gronk. That's about it. He had no relationship with Leonard Fournette or Ronald Jones or Chris Godwin or any of these other guys. Obviously, Antonio Brown is a guy that he had a relationship with. Mike Evans. He had to work and figure all of this out, and he's been able to do it. Again, they could be an 11-win team finishing the top wildcard spot, and maybe most importantly for Tom Brady, though he won't verbalize it, Bill Belichick is out of the playoffs and Tom Brady is mm. in the playoffs. This is one comparison, and I'm not I'm not equating the two, even though they're goats in their respective sports in the minds of many. I've always believed, and maybe there's a corollary here that, that you would agree with, maybe you wouldn't. I'll just ask it to you. I believe If you took LeBron James and put him on the worst team in the NBA, they'd be in the playoffs. Like the worst team in the NBA. Like the Sacramento Kings, for example. Hmm. They have the longest playoff drought in the NBA. We talk about the Browns and the Bucks having the playoff drought. The Kings have not been to the playoffs, I believe, in 14 years. Longest drought in the NBA. If you put LeBron on the Kings tomorrow, they would be like challenging for like a top four spot in the West. And I believe that. To me, there's a part of Brady that feels that way too, right? He just brings something into your organization because winning begets winning, right? If all you've done is won, you just expect to win. Now, I'm not saying he could go to the Cincinnati Bengals or somebody like that and move him into the playoffs because football's a dependent position. I got to be able to throw to guys that can catch all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. But there is something about Brady moving in and saying, even though I just got a two-year, $50 million deal and I'm basically halfway through the deal, We are changing the culture. Whether we win a Super Bowl or don't, I am going to leave this organization in a way, 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 way better place than I found it. And for some people that are just like binary and they're just like either he wins a Super Bowl or he doesn't. Either he doesn't or he does. I just think there is something to be said for moving into an organization and putting him in a far better position even after he departs. You know, Zubin, you said the word culture, and that is huge. Four or five years ago, The Patriots came down to scrimmage the Washington football team in training camps. They spent a few days there. And so I was watching Brady with great interest because when it it looked completely different, the way that Brady ran that practice. What do you mean? What do you mean? Brady ran it. It was a machine. Everything was precise. Every rep of every drill by every Patriot had a specific purpose for that player. They knew exactly what they wanted to get out of this rep of this drill. There was no wasted motion, and Brady was the one running it. It wasn't Belichick. Hmm. It was Brady running it on the offensive side. And I looked at Washington, and they ran training camp like NFL teams run training camp. Nothing wrong with the way they ran it. But compared to what Brady did, it was sloppy. I mean sloppy. Not that it was. It's just that that's how tight Brady ran it. That's the culture of the Patriots. That's part Belichick. It's part Brady. But that's the culture you're talking about that Brady brings to Tampa, that offense, when he leaves, will approach their week of preparation completely differently Mm. because they've been put on a runway that they would not have been on had it not been for Brady. How dangerous can they be? We know they're in. Mm. They're going to have to go on the road um, to make some hay, most likely. Um, How dangerous are they? Is this a Super Bowl team? Let Let me just brass tax it. Is this a Super Bowl quality team? 
they have a chance. The The question is, can the offensive line hold up? The defense is playing lights out. They're stopping the run. They can make opposing offenses one-dimensional. That one dimension is pretty awesome. <laughs> when you look at I mean, come on, Aaron Rodgers, if you want to make him a one-trick pony, which he isn't, they're, they're running the ball pretty well. But they can make opposing offenses one-dimensional. The issue they've got is the line. They drafted Tristan Wirfs in the first round out of Iowa, and he's going to be a really good tackle for them for a long time. But they still have work to do along the offensive line. The question will be if – that O-line can't hold up because if it does, I don't trust any quarterback in the league more than Brady at being able to attack the specific need of the moment. That means he doesn't overpower them with physical ability to, to drill the ball through a tight window 40 yards down the field like Aaron Rodgers can or to make magical plays like Patrick Mahomes does. Brady can't do that. But what he does do is he knows exactly where the weak spot of your defense is going to be pre-snap. After the snap, he confirms it or he sees the disguise and he knows immediately what the new weak spot is, and he goes there. And he's got the skill people with Mike Evans, and even Gronk, as you mentioned before, is doing much better now. He's getting involved more. He's got the ability to hit those weak spots in the need of the moment, and that's what makes them dangerous on offense. I couldn't agree more. It's amazing to think of everything he's been able to do, and I understand he's 43. After what I saw in the first half Saturday, and I understand the quality of competition is the Detroit Lions, but after what he's done in this league, The fact that he's not getting the benefit of the doubt like somebody that's like Drew Brees when totally healthy or Patrick Mahomes or Aaron Rodgers, I just think that is a travesty. I have no idea what this guy needs to do to get the benefit of the doubt, but maybe that's the motivation he needs for yet another Super Bowl in his first year in Tampa. Incredible. We'll see. Bucks are in. How far will they go? We will see. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.